Since his last appearance, two and a half years for John Winchell. John was 703. $1,500 at stake, first prize today. Last week, Steve Reno was a 386 to 360 winner over Bruno DeFeo to earn his spot in this championship match. Let's meet our bold as last week's winner, our number three seed from Southbridge, Massachusetts. Let's welcome Steve Reno. Yay! Steve Reno, 120 average, high single, 191. High triple is for 81. He bowls at American Lanes in Southbridge and at Munson Lanes as well. Steve had a 668 in the roll off to earn the number three seed. He'll be taking on the top seed in this latter series from Kingston, New Hampshire. Let's welcome John Winchell. John Winchell's average 130, high single 187, high triple 441. Bowls at Exeter Lanes, Leo Super Bowl in Amesbury and Park Place Lanes, and he got his 703 roll off decision on his birthday just uh, about a month ago. It's John Winchell and Steve Reno for the latter championship. The winner will get a spot in our Tournament of Champions at the end of the year. We're coming back for this afternoon's match right after this. Don't go away. We continue from Lita Lanes in Nashua with Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. We began this ladder series with five terrific bowlers. We're down to two. It's Steve Reno taking on John Winchell for the championship with Chris Sargent having beaten Eric Pelletier the first week, then Reno beating Sargent and Bruno DeFeo setting up this afternoon's championship match. And Steve Reno will be first to bowl here at Lita Lanes. A spirited crowd on hand ready for this championship match. The winner will get first prize of $1,500 and a spot in the Tournament of Champions at the end of the year. There's the old spread eagle with the nine pin in the back. He'll go for the uh, set on the left. Didn't quite catch the object pin in this case, which was the two. He'll now go for the four on the right. Hope for a nine or ten. Yeah, that's a Five. tough way to start. Mm. Fortunately, he has 29 frames to make it up. Yeah, I was watching John Winchell in warm-ups. He was pounding the pocket. Steve is 39 years old. He and Kathy have been married 13 years. Three children, Stephen, Brandon, and Alyssa. Almost made the shot. Works as an inspector at LaValle Machine in Southbridge. Is a sports collector, sports card collector. And he starts out with 15. Now we look at John Winchell for the first time. John from Kingston, New Hampshire. He's 30 years old. And he's right on the head pin, but leaves a tough shot. John is a roofer for Rain Check Roofing in Kingston, New Hampshire. and his bride Sally were married in August of 2000. They expect their first child in April. And he's into collectibles as well. Yeah, both these guys are. It's a terrific nine for John right there. John has recently gotten more into the, uh, the figurines, uh, action figures and McFarland sports picks, which means nothing to me because I'm not familiar with the, uh, the collection process there, but I'm sure it's a very lucrative for whoever's making those things. Off the head pin there, but got a good seven pin drop. And a makeable spare here. Not easy, but makeable. The one, the two, and the five. A piece of wood frozen to the five in the back would help out. That's what makes it a makeable spare. All right, it didn't take it. He didn't touch the five pin or the wood frozen to it. So both men going without a mark in the first two frames in this championship match. And a 10 box, an early four pin lead for John Winchell. We'll get to some of your cards and emails during the course of the match. As I mentioned last week, we have accumulated a lot of emails from the end of the last ladder series, the last tournament of champions actually. And through the first ladder series, we'll try to get to as many as we can. If we can't read them all, we'll at least acknowledge as many as we can. And uh, that pin was off spot, which may have uh, contributed to uh, Steve Reno chopping it off the floor.
Back-to-back tens for Steve Reno of Southbridge, Massachusetts. One WCBC title, and he was uh, ranked number 25 in the 0102 season on tour. Got an email from Dorothy Daniels. Mike from Daytona Beach, Florida. She's been a resident there for five years and can't tell us how much she misses watching bowling on Saturdays. There's a nice shot by Steve Reno. But don't move away, that's the key. That's right. You can't take candlepin bowling with you. You can by videotape or it's available on satellite now around the country. As Although I not everywhere, it. I don't imagine. In some places. Boy, another split for John Winchell. These guys are hitting the head pin and get nothing for it. 30-year-old bowler, roofer for Rain Check Roofing in Kingston. Not going to make the spare, so he's open through the first three. John has an average of 130, a high single 187, a high triple 441. An impressive 703 in the roll-off to earn the number one seed. And how important is the number one seed? Well, you just have to win one match to win the championship right. and get into the tournament of champions. Boy, that okay. looked better than that, didn't it, Dick? It was Another. one three pocket. Well, like you said, you were watching him in the warm-ups and he was burying it. And he he's was. not getting the breaks now. No. Boy, he throws a great ball. That ball was fading a little bit, though, which may be one of the reasons that uh, he didn't show very much for a pocket hit. He has a little bit of a tail, a little bit of yep. a left-to-right spin. It's like a screwball, a baseball screwball. It comes off the right-hand side of his right hand and spins from left to right. And it's a nine box. So we had a, a question from a viewer last week about spin versus nothing on the ball. And again, if you can, spin gives the pins a little extra rotating action. But make sure you can control it. There's more of a forward roll on, on Steve Reno's ball, and it works for him. And more of a spinner on John Winchell. Seven fill on the fourth frame spare. Right through the opening. Well, that's a 50 half for Steve Reno, well under his average of 120. John Winchell coming in with an average of 130. Got an email from a viewer wanting to know how to participate in the roll-offs, how to get on TV. The simple answer to that is contact Lita Lanes. Do that any number of ways. The easiest, perhaps, is LitaLanes.org. Get on the web. Lita Lanes, L-E-D-A. L-A-N-E-S, LitaLanes.org, O-R-G. And all of the information is there. Roll-offs are held Sundays, Mondays, and Thursdays at Lita Lanes. You do want to be a fairly accomplished bowler, however. It's worth pointing out, I think. But we've had bowlers with averages under 110 that have made the show and have done pretty well. John Winchell finally gets a break. A nine-pin drop of the first ball and a spare opportunity, the three-pin is staring back at him. The first mark of the string for John Winchell. They both have one mark, Winchell and Steve Reno. So we're looking at a pretty even match right now. I should point out, Dick, that next month, beginning December 21st, it's our four weeks of mixed doubles competition where we showcase some of the finest women bowlers teamed up with some of the great male bowlers. Is that pin going to stand? Looks That's like amazing. It. The seven pin did everything but fall over. It wobbled, it moved, it jumped. It was screaming out for help. Seven ten wood in the middle, an eight pin fill. Can he bounce the ball off that wood? Here we'll find out. No, nope. too full on it. But he will have the lead. But not by much. That'll be a nine. A four-pin lead. I think he's taking just an eight for it. He's shaking his head. Is he? Yep. He's taking oh, an eight for it. Yeah, that it, was close. It, I didn't see it. 
it's very, very close. Three pin lead. Again, there's a lot of honor and pride in the, the professional bowlers, and they don't want to take anything that they don't believe is theirs if the ball hits the pin before it actually makes contact with the pin. And the gutter before it makes contact with the fair play pin, then uh, whatever you get down after that doesn't, doesn't count. Thus the eight, although nine went down. Steve will be open in the seventh frame with a nine box. So neither team burning it, neither a player burning it up here in the early going. Want to be part of our telecast each week? You can play the bonus ball contest. Send us a postcard with your name, address, and pick a number from zero to 10. We will draw the postcard before our winning bowler bowls the ball after each match. And if what you select is matched by the bowler, you'll win the cash jackpot. I got a win a couple of weeks ago. I would say pick a number from one to 10 because now with our, our little change. That's true, the zero. Yeah, the zero would be a given, wouldn't it? Yeah. I just throw a gutter that, ball. Yeah. Zeros will not be allowed. Right. But we had somebody pick three, and Mike Sargent was skillful enough to hit, I'm sorry, Chris Sargent, to get a three. Ten box for Steve. So he has 79 through eight. He'll need a mark to break 100. John Winchell right on the head pin, and ouch, just the sound of that. Yeah, very sour sounding. Very intense look on John Winchell's face. Four pin still standing. The three, the five, the four, the seven. That's going to be an eight box. Well, as we've said before, sometimes the lower scoring matches are as exciting as the higher scoring matches, if not more exciting, because bowlers struggling. They may be more exciting at times, but they're not as energetic. Uh, nine pin drop. What's that piece of wood gonna do? If that piece of wood stays there, nope, it falls off. That's, well, it's good and bad. It's sticking yes. up here a little bit. If he hits that wood, it won't count, remember. He's gotta play it cleanly. And he will make the spare. Beautiful. Yeah, Second look. mark of the string for John Winchell. It's a $1,500 payday to our winner today, but the runner-up doesn't go home empty-handed for sure. We will give that uh, bowler $1,000. Of course, added bonus money from Lita Lanes for three in a row and for the high string of the day, another $50. Three strikes in a row today is worth $675. Lots of ways for the register to ring on Candleton Stars and strikes. Too thin. Hit the object pin too thinly, leaving the two and the eight. Al Ricard from Worcester is another in a long line of our loyal viewers who sent us in a copy of the article that appeared in the Worcester Telegram uh, a while back about the Colonial Bowling Center being the last of the Candleton Bowling Centers in Worcester. At one time, there were many, over 20. And now they're down to one. Thank you, Al. Al also points out he watches the show every week. Did I ever tell you I was from Worcester? Not today. Didn't, don't remember if I ever mentioned Has the that. Worcester Chamber of Commerce capitalized on that at all? At a Manchester Monarchs game last week when they played the Worcester Ice Cats, my good friend Bill Ballou of the Worcester Telegram was there talking about what's going on in the city. Always anxious to get an update on what's going on in the fair city of Worcester, city of my birth. You are covering, as a, a color comment, uh, commentator, some of the games with I am. Uh, Ken Kale I am. on WGIR this uh, coming season, as you did last year. Will you be doing any of the road excursions? I will not, at least not at this early stage. Mike Kalinowski is the director of PR for the Monarchs, and he usually sits with Ken on the road games. Does a nice job, too. But you were telling me before, not as good as you. Jim Rivers and I sh split the home games. Jimmy's a longtime New Hampshire broadcaster and uh, now works for the university system of New Hampshire in PR and uh, has a great hockey background and a great hockey mind, and he works with Kenny a lot, too. A 10 box and a 99. 
So John Winchell will have the lead. Of course, next spring, a, a new double-A baseball team in the city of Manchester Looking as well. Looking forward to that line. Boy, that's for sure. As of this time, in uh, early November, there is no name for the team, or mid-November. The Manchester baseball team. That's what they are. That's what they should call it. All the other names are taken. Now, John will be open in the ninth frame. So three marks between the two of those guys. He's at 107. One oh eight for John Winchell in the first string and a 12 pin lead over Steve Reno after one. We're headed to string number two from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. It's the championship match of the second ladder series on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. John Winchell will be first to bowl in the second string. John has a 12-pin lead over Steve Reno. And it's string number two, and he starts off with a bang. Watch the strike. I did have an email from a viewer who said I shouldn't be jinxing bowlers when they get a strike in the first frame, talking about 300 games. <laughs> I hardly think you're the blame for I that. don't think so. Four horsemen right side. We should point out there's never been a 300 game in Candlepin bowling. Now he'll be open in a second as he puts seven in the strike. What is it, 245? 245 is, that is the officially the one that we know recognized of? sanction. That's remarkable. Chair, uh, Montmany, I believe, is his name. And a nine box. Can't even fathom it. Reno up against a John Winchell strike. Almost throws one of his own. All that stays is the seven pin with no wood to worry about. But Jacqueline from Salem, an email. He points out that uh, with bowlers like Danny Harris, Jeff Sarek, all the way up to Charlie Drupas, he predicts a fourth seed winner this year. In six years, Dick, it has not happened yet. And a 200 string on TV. We haven't seen that either. No, but you know something, I can see that happening. I can see it happening. Although the fourth seed win is a little more likely of the two. There's a five fill on that first frame spare for Reno. He's he's lucky to be with a five the way the pump pins were falling. Yeah, right and that wood's not great either. Almost made it. With some strange bounces and some weird pin action, he almost made it. And that'll be a nine box. John Winchell is added two, and he leads by 14. Well, he does throw a smooth ball. Good action. 6-10 in the right-hand corner. Some wood just to the right and in front of those two pins. To go straight forward, I would think. Nice shot. All right, Michael, expert on all terms. Another email. Yeah, I think I'm term. over two of the last two, aren't I? Ray and Cheryl Clement of Barrington, New Hampshire, write in. Can you please tell us where the term sandbagging originated? Did we do that one before? Did we? I don't recall. I think so. Not very well be. I'm Next. catching up on all these emails. I don't, I don't remember which ones are yeah, which right now. Very diligent. Oh, this is sep early September. How many so print I cartridges did you go through downloading all these? This is early September, so this is not one that we would have Sandbagging? had. Sandbagging? Don't know. Because, of course, I've never done that. <laughs> but it yeah. is a deliberate uh, underperformance of your abilities is the definition. And they also ask, is Mike Morgan a grandfather? I don't know that. Uh, as far as I know, he is not. Yeah, I, now I do know that we, we did address that question. Did we? P people are going to think we're in reruns already in November. <laughs> well, that email came on the 14th of September. Well, we when taped we do? right that around might have been the day that we taped and I had yeah. it. Okay, very possible.
Missing the head pin, the one, eight, and ten with uh, four pieces of wood over on the left-hand side of the plate. You'd rather have them over on the other side, I imagine. Now this can go. This can go yeah. with the, uh, the way the wood is set up. And the ball might take the ten pin here. Let's see if he goes that way. No, he didn't go that way. Get any of them? You believe that? Steve doesn't spin. believe it. No. He's given up ten more pins, so it's a 22-pin lead, box to box, for John Winchell over Steve Reno. And he's in desperate need of a mark right here. And he throws a good ball on the strike. So that's a momentum builder for Steve Reno as we go to the break. We're coming right back to Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire, as we reach the halfway point of this championship match with John Winchell in the lead. You are watching WNDS-TV. John Winchell set to bowl on lane 34 at Lita Lanes in Nashua. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin, our entire WNDS-TV crew. John got a break when the split fell. The uh, six pin went over. The two and the four, no wood. Gone. Good spare for John, his third mark of the string. Kevin LaFon's our director this afternoon. On graphics is Kevin Sheehan. Our replay machine is being manned by Jonathan Barraza. Alex Kalish stops on audio. Keith Webb is our engineer and our camera crew of David Lawyer, Larry Haber, and Matt DiFilippo, and I think you heard John groan when that ball left his hand. Very disappointed, pulling out just four pins on the right-hand side. You know, he was born in New England, then as a child moved with his grandparents to Waterloo, Iowa, where uh, at age six they spent a number of years and came back to New England seven years later when he was 13. I don't think camp and bowling is very big in no, Waterloo. No, you're right, it is not. It is not existing, of course. But he did try 10 pin and didn't care for it. <laughs> Frankly, I like both games for different reasons. You know, variety is the spice of life. A lot of people are either 10 pin or candle pin bowlers. It's, it's fun to, uh, to do more than one. It's been a couple of three years since I pulled 10 pin. <laughs> There's Steve Reno in the pocket. You let me Will know. that four pin go? It wiggles, but doesn't go. He's got wood in front of the four, wood behind the four, and the wood behind the four is frozen to the seven. This goes easily. That's a spare inside a strike for Steve Reno. So he picked up 11 pins in the fourth frame on John Winchell's lead and has a chance to pick up even more because Winchell is open in the sixth frame. Thought he had it, but yep. didn't go. Hit it where he wanted to, but punched it out, left the two and the four. Well, he's gained one pin, so it's an 11 pin lead for John Winchell at this point as we've just passed the halfway point of the match. That's right in the pocket, and the 10 pin is still up. You wonder how or why. Now there's some wood surrounding this pin, and uh, John is checking it out. I think there's a problem piece of wood in the middle there, gang. I think he makes this one, though. He does. Fourth mark of the second string for John Winchell, who only had two in the first string on his way to a 108 and a 12-pin advantage over Steve Reno's 96. That's on the Brooklyn side. He breaks up the split. You know, he's marked every box on lane 34 this match, but not at all on 33, and this could very well be his first. And a tough piece of wood it way out tough front. Wood. Yep. Just enough of a roadblock to misdirect the ball or redirect it. That's how tough that wood is. 
big smile on John's face, but you know he's not happy. No, about it ain't the happy smile. No. He's not doing the Mr. Happy dance. <laughs> That's what he wanted—a clear shot at it. That's one of those smiles when you know under his breath he's saying <laughs> some very unpleasant things. <laughs> yeah. Good-natured fella, he and his wife, as I think you mentioned earlier. Sally just found out here a few days ago that they're expecting their first child in April, so that'll put you in a good mood. Will it go? Look at it surrounds the five pin. The five pin still stands. Frozen, I think, Dick? Yes. Uh, it's right out in front. Should not miss this shot. That's when you really get annoyed when you miss the whole thing and don't pick up that spare because you've got about a 15-inch target versus your usual 3-inch target. Or a little bit more than that, actually. Fourth mark of the string from Steve Reno. Missed the head pin. He will put six in the spare. Bit of a break with the 10-pin going down, leaving just the four horsemen up against an 8-frame open from John Mitchell. Winchell, rather. The outside, no. Tried to play it from the outside of the head pin instead of between the 1 and the 2. And a 10 box. 14 pin lead in the match for John Winchell with two boxes remaining in the second string. It's a three string match. Two in the four with some wood frozen against the back pin, the four. And again, that can be helpful. But he hit it so cleanly, he just chopped it right off. The two right off the four. Got a nice note here, a nice email from Jim Haynes, Mike from Ulrika, Massachusetts. He was at one of our last tape, recent tapings and talks about his uh, having an opportunity to speak with Jeff Surrett and what a nice young man he is. And he throws a PS on the email, Mike. He says, Mike, I would like to hear you play a little more of Olivia Newton-John <laughs> on your morning radio show. <laughs> I wish I could accommodate you there. Oh, it almost fell into it. And if it had, it would have taken the two pin with it. And this is what he had on the last box, but he had a little different wood set up and he chopped it off. This is a little bit better, marginally. Is it pin off spot there? It's there it spare. Is. Yeah, I think it was. Of course, Mike is the morning host of New Hampshire in the morning on WZID 95.7 FM. One of the top rated, if not the top rated, morning program in the state of New Hampshire. Is it Luckily it is. Yes, it is. Very, very blessed that's the case. Nice 130 game for John Winchell. It's an improvement from his 108. Yeah, it sure is. And now Steve Reno needs to mark out to eat into that lead. Caught the head pin on the Brooklyn side, but quite thin and left a tough shot. Five pins still standing. Four, five, six, nine, ten. Oh, punched it out. Next week, a brand new ladder of bowlers. It'll be our third ladder of the season. We have six ladders over the course of the year to determine six Tournament of Champion players. He needs a mark desperately. Again, the head pin, but thin, but he got a break this time. Will it go? Will it go? It goes! Sometimes when you least expect it. That one took a while. We'll watch it again, as much of it as we can. First, you got the diamond still standing, and then they go down. And there's nothing there. It looks like it's going to get it, is there, except for that last one. And there it goes. Working on a strike, on the head pin. Hit it 128. 130. They matched 130s in the second string, so the deficit remains 12. For Steve Reno, he trails John Winchell. 
the number one seed Winchell, the number three seed Reno, who will come out on top. One string remains. Don't go away. We're coming back to Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire for string number three of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Steve Reno will be first to bowl in the third string. He trails John Winchell by 12 pins. The winner of the match, $1,500 first prize money and a berth in the Tournament of Champions. The lone qualifier we have thus far is Dave Hodge, who won our first ladder series and is winning triple in the first ladder series. Was 401. And that determines seeding, the, the winning score in the championship match of the ladder series. Dave Hodge appears to be safe with the number one seed at this point. Well, yes, if our lead bowler, John Winchell, were to, for instance, bowl a uh, 165 or so, he would jump ahead. 164 actually would give him 402, and Steve Reno would need about 176. Not impossible. No way. There's a good spare for Steve Reno. He made a tough shot, and, he, and an important shot. He did, because the last two or three times he's had that, he's punched right through the middle, and the, that back pin is the key when you hit it off the, uh, the lead pin or the, the object pin. Good spare for Steve Reno. Spread eagle for John Winchell. I think I got an email about the spread eagle. I don't think I brought it with me that uh, some guy said, why don't we, uh, ba or back in the old days, or he's got a friend or something that calls it a pair of pants. Did never you see that, that email? No. I never did either, but when you think about it, it does look like a pair of pants that's spread open. Bow-legged. Yeah. He says, why don't you guys start calling it a pair of pants? Oh, there's a good nine, almost a 10 box for John Winchell. <laughs> Bowling at WNDS.com is our email address. We'll respond to as many as we can personally. There you go. And we'll read some of them on the air. And if you have a question, we'll take a shot at it or find somebody who knows the answer. Just want to acknowledge an email from Jerry LaPierre of Biddeford, Maine. You spent some time in Biddeford, did you I not? I did. The radio business. Jerry's from Maine and a big fan of Candlepin Bowling. Great shot. Wow. So John will be open, and that opens the door for Steve Reno to inch a little bit closer. And that'll be a nine box. So Steve Reno, trailing by 12 pins going into the string, will be trailing by whatever he gets on this ball. So it's going to be a three-pin margin. And a mark. So Steve Reno is vying to take the lead, putting the pressure on John Winchell, forcing John to mark. Steve on the spare, looking for some bonus money. Missed the head pin. Got a break, broke up the split, put seven in the mark, and has a makeable shot. Not going to make it. Mm. Missed the head pin. Don't want to miss those easy ones. That was missed the head pin, missed the spare, missed the $50 in bonus money. Settle for a nine box. I was just noticing that John Winchell is, uh, as we mentioned a couple times, he and his wife, Sally, are expecting April the 4th, and our taping date for the Tournament of Champions, should he get in, is April 6th. That's cutting it close. She better not be late <laughs> if, he, if, he, if he makes it in. This is a tough shot. There's a piece of wood that makes this makeable. Yep. It's lined up just where you want it to be. It's still a long shot, but 
Watch the Ducks fall here if he hits it right. Oh. Look oh. at this. He did not hit it right, and he got it anyway. And he even yelled nope when he let it yep. go. There was. Messenger went again. across from left to right. Oh, he hit it right on the nose on the five pin. I never would have given it a chance to make the shot. It was a seven pin, I think. Seven bounced off the wall and came yep. back to get it. That's an important spear. Look at this oh. shot. Boy, that's ugly. That is ugly. Put six in the spare. Five, eight, nine, ten. With no wood to help out. A piece of wood there wasn't much help. No. Open frame in the fourth. We could be virtually tied. As we go to the break with six boxes remaining in this match, that's going to be a seven box. And we are tied. We're dead even. With six boxes remaining, we're going to the break. Coming right back to Lita Lanes in Nashua. Heading down the home stretch. Excitement to follow when we return after this on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNBS TV. Steve Reno will bowl on lane 34. We have bowled 24 boxes of this championship match, and we're dead even. Six boxes remain. Steve Reno threw it to the Brooklyn side of the head pin, and look what he has to show for it. The diamond on the right, the seven pin in the left. And he almost made the shot. Tough Great enough to effort. make the diamond, yeah. let alone the other pin over in the corner. Ten box. Pinning becomes very important in this type of a match. If we tie after regulation, we bowl two boxes. And that has happened in the past. A lot of money at stake here for one match. 1,500 to the winner, 1,000 to the uh, runner-up. Steve will be open in the fifth and sixth frames. The door opens for John Winchell. That's an eight box. Great opportunity for John Winchell now to put a little distance between he and Steve Reno, because there isn't any at this point. Uh, oh, he broke up the split. He almost had the back row. He almost had the five pin still standing, and everything caved in at the end. Spare opportunity for John Winchell. Did make it. He was just keeping that ball on the lane. He was worried it was going to hit that piece of wood in the gutter, but it didn't. So he takes the lead. He will put five, six, seven, eight in the spare. It filled nicely. So now an eight pin lead in the fifth frame. This is very makeable. He's got to get by that piece of wood that's out front though, near the lip of the deck. Which could cause a lot of yeah. havoc. Redirect the ball. He played the wood and he made the spare. The chance you take. Big sigh of relief. Huh? Double spare for John Winchell to open some daylight. Now Steve Reno really needs to mark. Well, he threw a great ball and doesn't have a lot to show for it. That was a solid Brooklyn hit. He got a big split. Six, seven, eight, nine. I think he plays the left of the left of that front wood and take your chances and hope something comes out of the gutter and takes those two pins on the left. That's how I would play it. Let's see if Steve agrees. Nope. He did not play it that way. So he's open again. Time's running out on the young bowler from Southbridge. 
He'll take a nine box. Cannot afford any more open frames. I want to acknowledge an email from Reginald, Reginald Nickerson, Chathamport, Massachusetts. For many years, a friend in Northern Mass taped and sent us the bowling shows. We appreciate hearing from you, and that's a half Worcester. First half Worcester we've seen. Is it? All day, I think. Another open frame for Steve Reno. He's only had two spares this game, second and third frame. Mitchell, or Winchell rather, with three. But he put two of them together. And that's a seven box, and that hurts. So he ran into five open frames in a row. And John Winchell is in the driver's seat. Looking for some bonus money right here. Can he break up the split? The 7-10 still stands. Need a trick shot to get this one. 7 and 10. Well, there's some wood on the alley. Let's see, what's he do here? I say bust up the wood on the left yep. and see what happens. I would agree. That's what he's gonna do. Ooh, he almost made it. So no bonus money. We haven't given away any bonus money in this match. A nine box. So all the bonus money we don't give away goes to the Mike Morin fund. <laughs> Now yeah, we'll save it for next uh, next week. Brooklyn hit, nine pin drop, spare opportunity. Tough piece of wood out front again, although the, the advantage he has here, I think, is the wood that is behind the pin is frozen to yes. it. So tripping that front pin, as long as it touches that wood, it's gonna go. It didn't go. It took the wood with it, and it didn't go. It must not have been frozen to it. I thought it was. <laughs> Looked like it. Still life for Steve Reno, who will be down about 20 pins or so. Two frames to go. And a nine box. Well, what is it, 24 pins? 20 pins. Yep. Two marks would make it interesting. Anything less is not going to be enough. 20 pins, two boxes. Yeah. A double strike would certainly help. Four pin still stands. No wood around it. Nice clean shot. Must make this shot. Does. That's one. Great pressure bowler Steve Reno. Needs to finish with another one. He needs good fills as well. Obviously a strike would be preferable. head pin right through a spread eagle that should do it that's gonna be it it will be a seven and a 108 is that right for Steve Reno and a 334 and John Mitchell John Winchell already has he's already above that so John Winchell will advance and the only thing that we'll not know as we go to the break is if he gets a triple strike and we'll keep the cameras rolling and have it on tape if he does when we come back we'll show it to you the final of the champion of this latter series is John Winchell. We'll come back to meet our bowlers at Lita Lanes in Nashville right after this on WNBS TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. There you see the final score of the match 349 for John Winchell, 334 for Steve Reno. Winchell, the winner, and gets the berth in the Tournament of Champions. We go right to the bonus ball contest in the interest of time. Mike Morin's reaching into the bin. And let's see if we can come up with a winner. This is Mr. Ray Pinot of Derry. He wants you to get eight, John. Go for it. Looking for an eight. 
and we've got $30 in the bonus ball jackpot. $1,500 to John Winchell for winning the match, $1,000 to Steve Reno for losing it, and it's a nine and not a winner, a consolation prize from NNR Trophies in Winchenden, Massachusetts. We now have two in the Tournament of Champions. We do, of course, uh, Dave Hodge with 401, and next is John Winchell at 349. He's got himself $1,500, a nice payday. And we're out of time. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time when we start a new ladder series on Candleton Stars and Strikes for Mike Morin and our entire crew. I'm Dick Lutz from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. So long, everybody. Remember, when you and your friends get together, what do you want to do? Let's go bowling. We'll see you next time.